Welcome to The Snake Pit, a series of shorter pieces to provide background on the people and the places linked in the horrific Epstein child sex trafficking abuse case. Just a reminder about this podcast, the content can be disturbing. Hello and welcome to The Snake Pit. I'm Lisa. Today we have a review of an advice book that was written by Sarah Ferguson, Prince Andrew's ex, back in 2003. It is called What I Know Now. We'd like to thank the listener who paid 10 cents for this in a charity shop. That's a sacrifice for the common good. Here's the first excerpt I'd like to share with you. One article claimed that 82% of people would rather sleep with a goat than Fergie. In brackets, she says, I'm afraid that I was far enough gone to question the judgment of the other 18%. So that headline took first prize for her in the terms of the number of offensive headlines that were generated. But I need to ask you today, would you have sex with a goat or Fergie? Think about it. But goats, jokes aside, Sarah, she's not that amusing. In my opinion, she's been enabling child abusers for years and is doing so now. Fergie knows it and we now see how, in my opinion, pathetic and immoral she has become. In our opinion, the Duchess is just there for the perks and the money and she doesn't care what she has to say or do to bail Andrew out of trouble, even if it makes her look insane. Exhibit A. First, Andrew and I share the values that we've hoped to pass on to our children. Integrity, forgiveness, honesty, honour, enthusiasm and grace. Honour. Really? Okay. Now we have Exhibit B. Fergie stakes out poor women at Weight Watchers meetings. She has absolutely zero self-awareness. If someone hangs back at a Weight Watchers meeting, she writes, I'll march up to her and say, what's your name? Vivian. I see that you've got a camera, Vivian. Don't you want to take a picture? Come on, girls, help Vivian. We'll take a group shot. Could you imagine anything worse at a Weight Watchers meeting? I may have been to one in the early 2000s. They're actually quite frightening. So then you get this famous woman barreling up to you, demanding that you pose for a photo. And she brings it to everyone else's attention. Really, Fergie? She also writes without irony about how busy she is during the day. My typical day on tour. I wish I could do an accent. I might try one. I'm up at 4.30, a dark and empty hour. That sounds more like the Queen, but anyway. I've learned to savour this hour because it belongs to me. Uh, Then there's a quick working girl's breakfast of egg white omelette and fruit and tea. So she has a special working breakfast. Egg white omelette, fruit and tea. In all the years I worked in an office, I never had a specific breakfast every day. But anyway, that is Fergie's morning. Now, she says she has trouble slowing down, and in one particular case, she said her day was really packed full. She had to remind herself to slow down because she had a busy day ahead, people. She had an interview about her photography. (laughs) Photography, okay. Then a charity lunch. Then she had to go to Eugenie's netball game. Now, I totally approve of netball. Everyone knows that. But that's like half a day, isn't it? You shouldn't have to remind yourself to calm down. And let's face it, when she goes home, she doesn't have any housework to do. So what does she do with the rest of her time? Actually, that's what I'd like to know because I'm sure she didn't write this book. I'm sure it was ghostwritten from her ramblings. Now, she absolutely waxes lyrical about Andrew. We all know that. But here she talks about his communication skills, which in my opinion weren't on display the night of that dreadful BBC interview. But no, Sarah thinks he's gifted. She's just like Andrew. 
17 years ago, when I was first thrust into public life, I had no clue about formal speaking. I felt petrified whenever the duty called, but I knew I had to get on with it. To improve, I began observing people around me who were good at it. Andrew in particular. I watched for every detail, how he stood, how he used his hands and eyes. I monitored his cadence and how calmly he spoke, never rushing. I don't sound English anymore, do I? I saw that he took a big, deep breath before he went on, and that seemed to settle him. Okay. In particular, I saw how he established rapport with his listeners. Andrew didn't hide his personality or his humour. His listeners were reacting to more than just his words or his title. They were responding to him and all his charisma. Hard to imagine because much of what I've read about Prince Andrew goes on to say how rude he is and how he lacks charm. He certainly lacks dignity. Now, poor working girl Fergie, she made the mistake of getting a laptop and that poor device was assaulted viciously by her. So here's what she wrote. Now it was came down to the computer or me. I pulled out the plug just as the new mail signal hit and it laid there unopened in silence. The computer had gone to battery. I took the battery out, but yet still the screen glowed. Reserve battery? I was looking for a claw hammer when Beatrice came into the kitchen and saved the day. Fergie then goes on to say how she prefers the postman, which I'm sure many people do, but I've never heard of taking out the battery because you don't like the email alerts, that you found them too urgent. But that's our Fergie, isn't it? So there's a summary for you. You can see all of those on our website, jeffreyepsteinpodcast.com. You can get up and close and personal with all the excerpts from the book. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.